In this video, I'm gonna show you a secret hidden menu to fine tune the overclocking of your bit axe even more. It also unlocks the ability for you to go outside the boundaries of the overclocking limits in AxeOS. Hidden menus right here. In AxeOS, you're gonna go down to settings, and then at the end of the URL bar, you're going to put question mark OC, hit enter. Then you're gonna get this big warning that says custom settings can cause damage and system instability. Only modify these settings if you understand the risks of running outside design parameters. What actually changes here is you can just type in any old number that you want. It doesn't matter, there's no limits. What did it look like before? Let's disable overclock mode. Before, you have these set limits on here. You cannot go up or down beyond these on either frequency or core voltage. You also can't go in between these, which is what we're gonna do on the rest of this video. Let me get this saved and back to just its default frequency and core voltage. And you can see this Bidax Gamma 601. Uh, from Power Mining is currently doing a little over a terahash, and we're gonna keep a focus on that error rate that you're gonna see in the hash rate pane right there. As far as power, it's pulling 18 watts. That is reported in AxOS, reporting more over on the power meter. And we're definitely gonna take a look at this ASIC temperature of 64 to 65 degrees Celsius, which I'm I'm happy with right now. So let's test this, I guess, a little bit just the default way without the hidden menu. And then we're gonna take a look at why I might want to use this. So let's, uh, we're gonna leave the core voltage at that 1150 default. And we're just gonna start up in the frequency to see when I hit some limits here. So let's go to 550, I'm gonna hit save. We're gonna go back to the dashboard and I expect my hash rate to go up as I've increased the frequency that that ASIC chip is running on, that then the question is, does the voltage, is the voltage supplying enough power over to that ASIC chip for it to operate at that level? If it is not, what I would expect to happen is the error rates here in AxeOS would climb and or my hash rate would go the wrong way, it would go backwards, essentially meaning like I'm choking the ASIC chip, trying to operate at this higher frequency by not giving it enough power. Neither of these things seem to be happening, so my hash rate is looking good, my error rate is really low, I'm aiming for under 3% there. Next thing we gotta check is my power here, making sure that I am not going to heat, overheat. I'm at 66 degrees Celsius, I think that is fine. Power that is reported in AxeOS is 20 watts. I might be going up against my limit here shortly because this power adapter is a 30 watt power adapter. And taking into account any voltage spikes, I don't wanna go over 24 watts on that. Though the power meter is probably already reporting that over on the meter box there. But we're, we're just gonna keep going just for video's sake here. But you should probably get a, a higher wattage power adapter if you're looking to do this, but we're focused on overclocking. Okay, we're looking good there. So I now can go up to 600. The I-50 worked great with the default core voltage. I'm just trying to see at that core voltage, like as my starting place, how much more hash rate can I get out of this thing? So we're gonna keep watching those same things. We're gonna look at that hash rate, 1.21 terahash per second. Error rate is staying very low, down at 1.34%. And then I'm gonna go take a look at my heat is definitely climbing. I'm at 70.8 degrees Celsius right now, 70.9 degrees Celsius right now. I'm getting the danger high temperature warning, but I, I'm still feeling okay right now. I don't know if I would wanna run it like this, sustained, but for the video, we're, we're gonna test the upper limits to prove the point of like when I might need to use this hidden menu to find even better and more stable overclocks. So looking pretty good right now. So let's go back and we're just gonna go for it. So the next thing I can go for is actually the maximum here, which is 625. So let me go ahead and hit save on that. And we'll come back and we're gonna see. We're gonna see like what happens here now that I'm at 625. So 
Temperature is definitely getting way up there right now, which is a problem, though my hash rate is climbing and my error rate is staying very low. But these temperatures, I'm telling you right now, are getting too high and we are definitely going to overheat. But now I know that my chip can definitely take this higher frequency with this amount of power, but my temperatures are getting way too high. So what I'm going to do then to try to reduce the temperatures is come dial back the core voltage. Let's go to 1100 here, because what if this chip can operate at that higher frequency with less voltage, which would reduce the heat that is being generated? So let's take a look. Looks like my ASIC temperature is coming down. Still pretty high, but moving in the right direction. But uh-oh, we have a problem. And this is where this fine tuning is really gonna be helpful. My error rate is getting up there, 5%, I don't like that. When my error rate is getting up there, here's what it means. Frequency changes, aggressive overclocking, under voltage, or a bad power supply can significantly increase the error rate. What we're learning right now is that I am undervolting too hard. I am choking this ASIC chip operating at this higher frequency right now. But the problem is if I go to 1150, that produces too much heat. But if I go to 1100, it doesn't give it enough power. So I need to probably go somewhere between those. So that is where we're gonna go up here to that secret hidden menu. And that is again, question mark OC. We're gonna hit enter. And I need to find a range between 1100 and 1150 that is going to give me under 3% error rate. So I'm gonna go up in increments of 10. And I know that I'm going to produce more heat, but maybe I can find the balance here to get that error rate down. So we're at 1.27 terahash, which I love. The error rate is actually coming down, which I also love. ASIC temperature is going up a little bit, which I would expect because I'm giving it more voltage. Let's go back up and take a look. Error rate 3.5, it's up to four. So it's come down, but it's still a little higher than I would like. ASIC temperature is stabilized at around 68 degrees Celsius. Error rate is stabilized around four. So let's go back and we're gonna do that same thing. I need to give it a little bit more power. Maybe we we'll just go in increments of five to produce not too much more heat, but get that error rate down a little bit more. Let's go check on the heat, 68.6 degrees Celsius. Error rate is coming down 3.12%. Hash rate is staying up at one3 terahash per second. I would love to get that error rate below two if possible without setting that ASIC temperature too high. So let's just do one more adjustment and we'll see what happens. We're gonna go to 1120. Again, I can't go to 1120 unless I go to the secret menu. So we'll hit save, go back to the dashboard here. And we're gonna keep an eye, ASIC temperature, 69 degrees Celsius, 69.5 degrees Celsius, definitely getting up there. Look at my error rate though, down to 2%. And I'm staying at 1.29 terahash per second. My ASIC temperature seems like it's stabilized under 70 degrees Celsius. My error rate is below three, which was my goal climbing a little bit right now, but we'll see that stabilize here in a second. There we go, back down to 2.44, 1.34 terahash per second. And the only way that I could achieve that is by using this secret hidden overclocking menu that is built in XOS, but hidden behind a special URL that you have to put in. There is so much more that you can do in an approach to overclocking. This is just one example that would show you why you might wanna use this secret hidden menu. I hope you enjoyed this video and getting to do it with me live so you can follow my process and my thinking and why I'm doing the things that I am doing. If you missed 
my introduction and setup video to the Bidax Gamma. I'm gonna leave that linked on the screen right here for you to check out a little bit further. And if you wanna see a way more powerful Bitcoin miner that is shaped like a baseboard heater to heat your home, I'm gonna leave a video on that on the screen right here for you to check out as well. Otherwise, please take care of yourself and each other, and I'll see you in one of those videos.